Thank you. So hi, everybody. Um, so I'll be talking to you about three of the gifts that my users gave me. And you might be wondering what kind of gifts I'm talking about. Well, uh, it's not material gifts like candy or flowers or socks at Christmas. I'll be talking about immaterial gifts, the kind of gifts that help you grow as a person and that usually last forever. So I guess I'll try to show you how we can develop our own skills by simply being there for the people who are uh, using our products and receiving everything that they have to give us. A few words about myself. If the clicker were working, maybe I need to get closer. Okay. So uh, this is me after the first successful bicycle ride this spring. Um, and apart from biking and getting my legs all bruised in the process, I've been in the form building business uh, since 2011. Never got bored, surprisingly. And since uh, 2015, I've been working on Captain Form, which is a WordPress plugin for building forms. So you can build with it like conic forms, payment forms, registration service, and so on. Now, you can imagine that it wasn't easy for us to um, enter the WordPress market with all the great competitors out there like Revity Forms and Ninja Forms and so on. But we did manage to grow a pretty solid user base and to uh, build a good image for our plugin. And we believe that one of our main strengths is this focus that we place on listening to our users. I listen with the same enthusiasm to happy users, to neutral users, and to piss off users because every interaction is helping me uh, grow in some way and is making me more able to build better uh, solutions. Now, the things that I've learned from users, they go beyond uh, these uh, three gifts that I'll be talking today, but these three might just be the most important ones. And they are the gift of building solid roadmaps, the gift of teaching efficiently, and the gift of working in a happy team. So to kick it off with the first one, The roadmap, it is your product's journey from point A to point B and C and so on. Your product can be anything from a plugin that you are developing to a theme that you are designing or a website that you are building for a client. And each of these points, they represent a new feature that you are going to implement or a new opportunity that you are uh, going to take. And at Captain Form, our process of building the roadmap consists of three steps. Generating ideas, validating them, and uh, prioritizing what results out of the first two steps. And to uh, start with a real life example, uh, I have the bad habit of planning almost anything. And since weekends, they only come well once a week and don't last for very long, I plan them ahead. And what I do is write on one of my many lists every activity idea that comes to my mind, like go biking, play tennis with my best friend Dorina, read the book Do You Talk Funny by David Nichol, some crazy stuff like steal a car, and some serious stuff like plan the next work sprint. And after my list is finished, that's where the validation starts. And here is where the concepts of value and effort come in. So I think about what is the value of this item and what kind of effort does it entail. So go biking, it has a lot of value because it is good for my health and it also uh, relaxes me. And in terms of effort, uh, there's little resources uh, involved, just time resources, about three hours. 
play tennis with Dorina, it is also valuable for more or less the same reasons, but Dorina is out of town this weekend, so it would be quite complicated to get her to the tennis court. Read a book, do you talk funny? Well, this is valuable because it has a lot of tips on how to make my presentations more funny, which is, well, not a bad idea. And uh, the effort invested, uh, it is once again reasonable, so just time resources about six hours. Steal a car. Now, here the value is debatable depending on the type of car that I steal, but in the long run, the effort, it involves both uh, time and money resources like three years in prison and financial damage. Uh, and finally, plan the next work sprint it is valuable uh, because my team needs this planning and this task involves not only me, but also other people. But here the effort is debatable because on the one hand, I am saving some energy for Monday, but on the other hand, this is a work task that would take up from my already short weekend. So after I finish, I finish this uh, validation, um, I can easily, you know, exclude the items that are not feasible. So play tennis with Dorina and steal that car, they are uh, dropped from the list. And I'm left with three items um, that I now need to prioritize. And what I do is think about the value versus effort ratio. So go biking, it comes in first because it requires the least amount of effort read the book comes in second, and plan the next work sprint comes in third. Now, it is quite the same with product roadmaps because the same three steps apply, generating ideas, validating them, and prioritizing what results. Generating ideas. Now, this means writing down every new feature that you think about, that your users or your competitors' users think about, that your team or your boss think about or that any other stakeholder thinks about. Now, the human brain, it can only save so much information, so it's a good idea to write everything down to keep things in a centralized way. And also, the human brain is quite biased so try not to uh, approve or dismiss any idea from the beginning before going through the validation process. And in what the validation is concerned, you know, every stakeholder usually believes that his own idea is the most important. But if I take for granted my boss's idea, for example, because, well, he is my boss, and then I invest two months into building it, two months of resources, but afterwards I don't bring in additional revenue, then I am the one who is responsible for it. So the two concepts come in, value and effort. And in order to assess, for example, the value of ideas, there are certain questions to be asked and they all revolve around our users. For example, how many users would find this feature useful is it just one lonely rider, or are we talking about half of the users of our product? What would users be able to achieve through this feature? Is it something minor or something with greater impact? How much would users be, will be willing to pay for this feature? Does it match the scope of my product? And is it a feature that will boost the overall product image? In terms of effort, some questions to be asked are how many developers are needed for a good implementation and how much time will it take them to do that? What type of maintenance will this feature need after it is launched and what kind of support resources will be required? Also, how easy will it be to communicate the benefits of this feature because Every resource that we have, development, support, or marketing-wise, so every resource that we invest into a certain feature, well, it is not invested into a different feature, which might be more valuable. Now, in order to answer these questions, sorry, 
In order to answer these questions, to um, assess the value of a new idea and to see whether the effort invested is worth it or not, we turn to our users again. And here are some uh, techniques for user validation. Interviews with power users that are aimed at uh, gathering their feedback on the topic and at assessing their interest into this potential new feature. In-app surveys that have more or less the same aim but are focused rather on a quantitative result than a qualitative one. Front-end polls that list not just one but multiple possible new features and that address not only current users but also potential new ones. Competitor research. Now, if a competitor already has this feature or a similar feature, how is it working out for them and what do their users think about it? Launching minimum viable features. Now, this means putting in production the core functionality of a new feature, which requires little development resources and help gather a quick user response so that you know whether to move forward or not. And this can also be uh, combined with some maybe testing. Okay, so using such questions and such techniques, we are able to uh, remove some of the features from our list while others' features will stay, and these can easily be prioritized by assessing the value versus effort ratio. And when my boss asks me why I haven't implemented his idea, I'll be able to justify any decision that I've made and to explain to him how I built the most valuable roadmap for our product based on what I've learned from its actual users. Because, because all of the input that I gather from users that I analyze and filter, it helps me become a better, a more confident and more trustworthy roadmap planner. I'm done with the more theoretical part. So we'll be moving on to something more uh, relaxing. The second gift that I've received from my users is the gift of teaching efficiently. And here I'd like to tell you a little story. So uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was uh, boarding this plane and I was like extremely thirsty. But I hadn't bought water in the airport because it was like six bucks or something, which seemed too much for the basic human right of hydrating. So I was sitting on this plane and waiting for the cabin crew to, to come, but they weren't coming and I was getting you know, more and more thirsty and extremely uh, impatient to get my beverage. And then at one point I stood up from my chair for some reason and then I sat back down but did it quite violently, totally not on purpose. And the woman behind me said, Next smile, can you dich zanfter hinsetzen? Du hast meinen Kaffee verschüttet. And I was like, English, please. And she said, so next time, can you please sit down more gently because you have spilled my coffee. And I was like, how come you already have a beverage? Right? So uh, we had, you know, different concerns, different uh, priorities at that point in time. We saw things differently. So... Uh, if I were in her shoes, for example, I would have definitely been pissed off by the idiot who sat down brutally and spilled my beverage. Speaking about shoes, I like to put myself in other people's shoes because this way I get to learn how the world works a lot faster. And what I love about users is the fact that they give me every day the chance to be in somebody else's shoes to learn about diversity and about seeing things from a different perspective. And here are just a few ways in which we are uh, different from our users. I know my own product, Captain Form, very well. I am usually more technical than my users are, and this product is the main focus of my activity. Whereas for users, it is simply a tool. So we are more knowledgeable than our users. 
I use certain terms to uh, designate certain concepts and my users, they may use the same terms to refer to something else. So we understand terms differently. Some people never use an exclamation mark at the end of a sentence. Others do. Others add three exclamation marks to signal how pissed they are. And others add three exclamation marks, well, just for the sake of it. So we have different ways of expressing ourselves. I'm from Romania. My users may be from Finland. They may be from the States, from Japan. So we are culturally different. Uh, also, I may be having a wonderful day while my users may be having a very shitty one or vice versa. We lead separate lives. So you can see that we are quite different from one another. And what matters in the end is the pure, objective, unbiased information. And that's what I'm trying to reach in every interaction that I have with users. I think about what is this user really trying to say? And how can I give a reply that makes the most sense to him? Me and my colleagues, you know, we love each other, but I know I can get a tiny bit annoying when I keep asking them, are you sure that's what the user meant? Are you reading between the lines? And are you using the simplest words to explain the solution? And this goes uh, far beyond support tickets. It applies to how we build uh, the interface, to how we promote the product, to how we write documentation. And to give you just, uh, just a small example, we have this feature that allows users to have the form pop up on the page when the event on window leave occurs. But that's not what our documentation says. It doesn't say have the form pop up on the page when the event on window leave occurs in the browser. It says have the form pop up when the visitor leaves the page. Because the greater part of our users they wouldn't understand what on window leave means. That is not their job. Their job is to run their businesses in the fields of uh, HR, education, marketing, gardening, horse breeding, or anything else. And my job is to communicate what my product has to offer in a way, in a language that makes sense to both of us. So, um, when we try to grow user retention, to keep users coming back to our product or to our website, what we are actually trying to do is teach users how they can get value from our product. And being a good teacher means communicating valuable information in a way that relates to the person who is receiving it. Right, so um, through their diversity, users can really help us be uh, better teachers. You just have to put yourself in that state of mind where you are really willing to listen to what they have to say. Finally, the gift of working in a happy team. And before I move on with this one, I would like to ask you if you know that uh, joke about the, the programmer who gets sent to the grocery store by his wife? <coughs> okay, do you know it? Can you share it with us? Tell me and I'll tell them. <laughs> no, you're shy. <laughs> okay, then I'll tell you for you. So, <laughs> so uh, a developer gets sent to, to the grocery store by his wife and his wife says, buy a carton of milk, and if they have eggs, buy 10. So what do you think that the developer brought home? 10, ten cartons of milk. 10 cartons of milk, exactly, yes. It's quite expectable, so uh, that's what the wife said. She said, buy milk, and if they have eggs, if that condition is true, then buy 10. So uh, I'm using this example to uh, emphasize the importance of knowing the context, of discussing the details. 
because a team without a context is usually not a happy team. Uh, back in the day, our tasks, they were pretty much like multiply A by B and display the result, so I'm keeping it simplistic, and the team did it. But they had little passion in doing so, and sooner or later, the debate used to start, like, what does A really stand for? Is it a number of apples or the number of apricots? What does B stand for? Is it a number of blueberries or the number of bananas? And is C really the cost or something else? So even when you know requirements are very well uh, detailed, there's a high chance for things to be uh, understood uh, differently and go sideways. So step by step, we understood how important it was to invest time into simply discussing the user scenario with the entire team. For example, who are we doing this for? Well, Jerry. And what does Jerry do? He gives programming workshops. Why does he need our forms? To register attendees and to collect ticket payments. Are his tickets priced differently? Yes. And can you send up multiple attendees through the same form submission? Yes. Great, then. A is the price level, B is the number of attendees, and C is the total amount that we need to pass to PayPal. Let's do this. So getting the team involved from the beginning helps ask the right questions from the get-go. And uh, also, this way, the team gets to care about the user and sometimes makes it a personal goal to help the user succeed. So the work is more efficient and the team is more motivated. And um, yeah, spaced out. Right, so the work is more efficient uh, this way. And now you know there are days when uh, I'm a bit under the weather and not really in the mood for doing anything. And then somebody from my team comes and asks, um, so has Jerry replied yet? Did he launch his new workshop? And uh, does he need anything else from our side? And this, you know, it makes me think like, God bless Jerry and his workshop for keeping our team, helping keep our team motivated and putting a bit more uh, passion and purpose in our uh, daily activity. So I guess that's it. Uh, these were the three gifts that I wanted to talk to you about. So to sum it up, it is the gift of um, building solid roadmaps that we receive from our users through their input the gift of being a better teacher through the diversity of our users, and the gift of working in a happy team through this usage scenarios that uh, we uh, discuss about and that help us bond as a team. So I encourage you to look beyond every uh, interaction that you have with your users to really invest yourselves into these interactions to put some love into it, because we receive from our users at least as much as we give them. Thank you. <laughs> and before we get to the question part, Edmund actually gave me an idea. Uh, I also have some swag from Captain Form. Uh, it's uh, a USB drive that can be put on your keychain. It has uh, eight uh, gigabytes, but I only have 10 of them. So if you want, please stop by the speaker's table and I'll be happy to give you one. So if you have any questions. Thank you, Alexandra. Are there any questions for her? Anybody in the gallery? No, I can't see very well. Ah, wait. There, right there. Uh, thank you very much for your talk. Uh, first, I want to say, you know the website Quora.com, when they share different experience? Quora. Work.com? Yeah, Quora. They basically oh, share different Quora. life hacks. 
Quora? Uh, yeah. Of course, yeah. yeah so I, I read once that if uh, you head to the airport, just take a plastic bottle with you, because in many airports they have those fountains uh, that pretty much have the same water that you can drink, so you don't have to buy. Okay. It's related to your uh, okay, example. Okay, thank you for yeah. this. Yeah, and the question is, have you ever had some uh, funny experience when you didn't, when you sort of misunderstood the customer and your actions were not the, precisely what they meant? Some, some funny case, maybe? Oh. Yes, I mean, there are plenty of them, but I can't think of a specific example right now. But, but there are tons of them, so uh, I'll just share them with you uh, afterwards because, you know, sometimes it's very uh, frustrating, other times it's hilarious. And I actually remember one thing, um, but it's not funny. Um, <laughs> so it was, it was uh, we had a national, I mean, two national holidays in a row in my country, Romania. And uh, it was also a weekend, so uh, our team was, you know, they, most of them, they weren't working those days. And we had this, uh, this user, a paying customer, and he had, uh, he had uh, an interesting scenario uh, in which he needed to, um, to receive some PDF uh, form submissions for some uh, university admissions. And um, we had a bug. We had a bug that was causi causing those PDFs not to be uh, generated like they should uh, have been. Um, but we had fixed it. I mean, we managed to fix it in a matter of hours. And uh, in theory, the client didn't have a problem anymore. But somehow, uh, he didn't get that. And he was still pissed because, uh, because his PDFs were not working correctly, but actually they were. And um, he left us a one-star review in the plugin directory, and he called us uh, amateurs. And after, you know, spending uh, hours with the few devs that I had to fix his problem and actually managing to fix it, we received that, that, uh, that one-star review, and it was, like, painful at that, at that point. So, uh, yeah. I think this, go this goes into the user diversity uh, pool, you know, where you can't always uh, be at the same uh, level or speak at the same level and you don't get your message across in the way that you want to. Yeah. Anything else? Okay, well, thank you very much, Alexandra. Thank that you. That was too. great. Thank you. Um, yeah, so let's give her a round of applause. Thanks.